Hey guys, welcome back to a new rider series on Blind Stuff MTB. I'm your host Stefano and we're here to talk mountain biking. In the last video, we gave a brief intro to the series. We're going to be covering mountain biking starting from the very basics and then progressing to more advanced topics. What those topics are going to be is going to depend mostly on the feedback I get from you guys on what to cover next. So what do I mean by the fundamentals? We're going to be jumping over a few key points that I think you should know. We won't take a deep dive on anything in particular. Instead, we just want to get familiarized with the basics. The first obvious point is what exactly is mountain biking? And the answer to that is actually quite broad. Mountain biking is going to look quite different to each rider. Some people like to go out and pedal as fast as they can, and others just like to go out and enjoy the view. Some people like to ride solo, some people like to ride in groups. But for most of us, it's going to be a combination of all those things. Over time, you will find your own definition for mountain biking. For me, it's really about freedom. Another thing that I love about mountain biking is being in the middle of nowhere. Here in my home trails of Virginia Key, we're just about a six or seven mile ride away from downtown Miami. And when you're riding out of here, it still feels like you're in the middle of nowhere. On some occasions, I even do get to go to the middle of nowhere. And just being in the forest by yourself, that solitude has something to it. What a lot of people tend to call dirt church. If after a first few rides you like the sport and you start to take it seriously and invest some time into it, I guarantee you will get to meet a bunch of amazing people, go visit some fantastic places, and overcome challenges that you would have never even thought possible. Go. What is definitely 100% true about mountain biking is that you'll be challenged, you'll have fun, you'll be a more fit person, and I'd even be willing to bet some of the discipline you're going to get through mountain biking is going to reflect on other aspects of your life. But let's get back to why we're actually here. I got sidetracked talking about how much I like mountain biking. So these are the absolute basics I think you have to know. Always wear a helmet. You can choose to wear a half shell like this one or a full face like this one. I personally ride with a Met parachute, which is a light full face helmet, but any helmet that has good ratings is acceptable. Just make sure you put one on. In this one in particular, this is my old helmet. You can see that sometimes they are necessary. I took a pretty big tumble and the helmet suffered a lot of damage, but I was not hurt at all. An important second is to wear glasses. Glasses come like this or in goggles and they're both the same thing. Just choose something to cover your eyes. A nice addition is always gloves and some kind of pads. I personally only ride with knee pads, but every rider is different. Your first rides are going to look a lot like this. But they're going to feel a lot like this. What I'm trying to say is you're here to have fun. In the beginning, even the most basic things will seem challenging and you're going to have a lot of fun getting through them. Progress through the sport intelligently. You'll be surprised at how much you can improve if you avoid injury. Oh crap. Nice! Yeah. Yeah. It's always good to push your boundaries, but do it in a reasonable way. Whatever your 100% is, if you push close to that, you will progress. If you push to 150%, you will crash. That's gonna hurt tomorrow. Bikes come in many forms, but the main distinction you have to make is based on their suspension design. There are bikes out there who have no suspension at all, called rigid bikes, but they're not very common on the mountain biking scene. Some people do ride them, but they're more of a niche. Your first bike is most likely going to be a hardtail like this one. As the name indicates, hardtail means that there's no suspension in the rear, which is indicated by the fact that this rear triangle right here is rigid. As you can see, there is nothing allowing movement there. The front of the bike on hardtails does in fact have suspension and suspensions for the front tire are called forks. Now the main difference that you're going to see between that one which is a hardtail and this one which is a full suspension is all in this area here. They're both going to have the same forks in the front. Some may be better, some may be worse and in general full suspension bikes tend to have better components but that's not necessarily a norm. The big difference is really in this section right here. As you can see the rear triangle is connected through the linkage which are these moving arms over into the shock, which is what actually allows for the rear suspension of the bike. Now, if I stand here and I compress this, you can see that the whole rear of the bike moves when I apply downward pressure. The same thing is gonna happen when the terrain is acting on your wheel. 
Then it's gonna be particularly useful when you're going towards bigger terrain with rocks and drops. That doesn't mean that the hardtail can't do that, but the full suspension does make it a little bit more easier and comfortable. In comparison, you can see that here, if I apply the same downward force, nothing is moving. That means that riding one of these ones fast takes a little bit more finesse. The reason that your first bike is probably gonna be something like this is because the cost difference between a good hardtail and a good full suspension is pretty significant. And when it comes time to choose, it's better to go with a good hardtail than a bad full suspension bike. Now let's go over some of the basic parts on your bike. I'm not gonna cover them all, just the most important ones. This whole area is your cockpit. The bars are connected to your brake levers. In the US, the right brake is the rear one and the left brake is the front one. In some other parts of the world, they are backwards. This right here is your shifter. Your shifter is gonna change your gears. There's a cable that goes all the way through the bike and moves this part here, which is called the derailleur. When the derailleur moves, it allows the chain to jump onto the different cogs of the cassette. Each one of the cogs of the cassette represents a different gear. This bike in particular and many modern, modern other ones do not have gears in the front. This area is called the chain ring. Your bike may have one, two or three gears right here. If it does have it, there will be another derailleur that will be moved by the shifter on the left hand part of your cockpit. My bike instead has a dropper lever here. The dropper lever moves the seat post or the dropper post up and down remotely. The idea behind that is that when you're going over tough terrain, the seat can be low and out of the way. And when you need to pedal, the seat can be very far up. This allows you to choose a good position for the seat without having to compromise somewhere in the middle. This whole area is your frame. The frame is connected through the linkage to the rear triangle. Here is the shock, here is the fork. Last but not least are the wheels. The wheels are the combination of three parts. The outside metal part, which is called the rim, these little sticks, which are called the spokes, and the center, which is called the hub. All three of them together compose the wheels. Onto the wheels, you mount your disc rotors, which are these right here, and your calipers, which are these right here. This is what actually does the braking. Connected to all of that is the fork, as we had mentioned previously. And of course, on the outside is the tire. The only thing we have left over are the contact points. These are the pedals, the grips, and the saddle. For pedals, there are two kinds. I use flat pedals, which are these with the little pins to hold my shoes, or clipless pedals. Clipless pedals have a mechanism here to hold your foot in place, but we'll get to that in one of the next episodes. So those are the basics for the bicycles. There's just one more little point that I want to cover today, and it's trails. Trails are rated according to their difficulty, and there are two distinct rating systems, one used for the US and one used for Europe. They agree on some things and disagree on others. But what's true for all of them is that most everywhere that you go, you're gonna find signs like this. Sometimes they're this big, sometimes they're tiny little squares about the size of this L. And in there will be indicated what kind of a trail you're looking at. One thing that's very important to remember is the trail rating is dependent on the place that you are. One example is right here. In Virginia Key, a blue trail can be done by most intermediate riders. If you compare it, say, to Windrock Bike Park in Tennessee, the blue runs over there are super challenging. Now let's look at what each of the symbols mean. Green circle is for novice trail. A blue square is for intermediate trails. A black diamond is for advanced trails. And that's as far as I can go here in Virginia Key. We don't have any double diamonds here. Double diamonds are expert trails. This rating applies mostly to the US. Europe has a slightly different rating, and I'm gonna put a table here that's gonna show you the equivalence between the ones I just told you and how they rate in Europe. Always keep in mind though, ratings are a guide. They're there to give you an idea more or less of what to expect on the trail. Every single trail will be different depending on where you go. So don't expect to find the exact same kind of features in all trails just because they have the same rating. This is especially important once you start to travel to other locations to get your mountain bike rides in. I know I just bombed you with a lot of information and I know we jumped around a little bit. It was kind of on purpose. Remember, the idea here was not to dive deeply into anything, but just to get a baseline of the base information that we need to make this whole series make sense. Now, I feel that I can talk to you about bike parts, trail ratings, and other things, and it's never gonna be, well, what does he mean by that word? In the next episode, we're gonna be talking about the disciplines of mountain biking and how the bikes are built differently for each one of them. If you're thinking, well, that's great, but how do I actually choose a bike? Don't worry, we're getting there. But instead of telling you choose bike A or choose bike B, 
I hope to give you enough information so that you can go do your own research and choose a bike that fits your needs the best. Because as I told you before, each mountain biker is different and what may work for me may not work for you. I hope you feel like you learned something today. If you want to give me your feedback, which I would greatly appreciate, or if you have some questions about today's episode, the comment section below is your friend. I will do my best to answer everything. And if not, people always jump in with their valuable insight as well. Well guys, I will see you for the next episode of the new mountain biker series here on Blind Stuff MTB. In the meantime, I hope you had fun with this one and happy riding.